Hello and welcome to the Ohio Association of College Admission Counseling Virtual College Fair. Thank you for joining us tonight. We have a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. When you use that Q&A, you can direct a question to a specific school by including their name in your question or direct something to all of our representatives to share about their institution. This is just one of many different sessions that are happening as a part of this program, so be sure to sign up for additional sessions. This presentation is being recorded and will be available within about a week at the same website where you registered. So if you're looking to sign up for more presentations like this 6x6 virtual college fair, the college decision search panels that are being held in two weeks, or to watch the recorded presentations. You can find all of that information at strivescan.com slash Ohio. I'm excited tonight to welcome six schools. Tonight we'll be hearing from the University of Minnesota Twin Cities, Saginaw Valley State University, Syracuse University, Bowling Green State University, Ohio University, and Loyola University, Chicago. I'd like to welcome our first presentation from the University of Minnesota, Twin Cities. Awesome, thank you, Jennifer. Um, hello, everybody. Thank you all to Ohio. So just for the sake of time, I wanna make sure that you get to hear from all of the schools today. I'm gonna to dive right in and move kind of quickly. So I appreciate everybody for that. So my name is Jacob Osterman and I am the Ohio Recruitment Counselor for the University of Minnesota, Twin Cities. So this presentation, I'm very briefly just gonna talk about what we offer here at the university academically, student life, um, our incredible location, the Twin Cities, and a little bit, some interesting stats that I wanna share with you all, and then my information. So starting off, there we go. We offer a breadth and depth of academics. A breadth, and then we have 150 majors and over 135 minors. In a depth, and that we over a hop, over 180 graduate programs. So if you fall in love with your four-year career and you really want to study a specialized craft, heck yeah, you can. We have so much capacity for you to be able to do that. How we organize our majors is we put them in eight freshman admitting colleges, which I think is something that's kind of unique about us. Is that you're not just joining the university. We don't have like a generalized studies program or like a completely um, undecided. You do have to know a little bit about what you want to do. And I think there's a benefit to having it this way because each of our colleges have their own specialized services. So their own specialized career services, study abroad capacities and advising services, each in their colleges that are really tailored to their specific fields of study and interest, which I think is a really great support with looking into kind of looking for your real life experiences and really setting you up for future career success. Also, we are a big 10 university. So we are a large school of 31,000 undergraduate students. That's a lot, right? However, our student to faculty ratio is 17 to one, regardless of major who are on campus. And so we have a lot of faculty here that you are able to connect with and get your questions answered. And what about life on campus? So we have over 900 student groups. So really, you know, more than 200 multicultural student groups, more than 50 intramural sports teams. So if you have an interest, I guarantee you someone else on campus has a similar interest to you. If you want to get involved in research, we are Minnesota's tier one research facility. So yes, we have a relationship with our state government, but also that means that roughly 90% of all the research done in the entire state of Minnesota goes through our system in some capacity. So there's an immense amount of research opportunities available for our students to get involved in. We also have one of the most robust study abroad programs in the country with over 200 programs in over 60 countries. And there's a lot of different ways you can do it. You can do three weeks, you can do a summer, you can do a semester. And we just take pride that regardless of major on campus, if you wanna supplement your degree with a, you know, a, a experience to diversify your experience and see our incredible earth, we highly encourage you to do so. And then our campus also offers 20 big 10 teams. So we have 12 female sports and eight male sports. So shout out to ladies. Um, we do compete with schools like Iowa, Wisconsin, Michigan, Michigan State, and we are the Maroon and Gold State. There are over a million Gopher fans coming to cheer on our sports teams each year. I will say as a current student, all of our sports are free except for three, men's football, men's basketball, men's hockey. Those will come at discounted rates, whether it be season, you know, single tickets or season passes, but I'm going to be real with you all right now. If our border battles are in town, so if Iowa is in town, everybody's showing up to see us beat Iowa. If Wisconsin is in town. That's, that's the big deal. And you will know when the Badgers are visiting campus. Now, I think the biggest thing that I have to talk about at university though, 
is our incredible location that we have in the cities of Minneapolis, St. Paul, and the fact that it is literally in our backyard. In this photo here, you see our train. This is a city train from Minneapolis, St. Paul. It's called Metro Transit. It goes right in front of our student union. You hop it, four stops, 20 minutes, you're in downtown Minneapolis, this beautiful skyline you see right here. And that comes with some immediate benefits. On the professional side, in the Twin Cities, there are 16 Fortune 500 companies based here, which is second in the, in the nation for Fortune 500s per capita behind only New York City. So I know I say you got us, but that's a pretty awesome company. And these are some of these incredible companies you see listed here. We also have the largest career fair in the state with over 250 employers twice a year looking to bring in our students, whether it be you know, internships, practicums, co-ops, whatever real life experience you can think of, there's an immense amount of them available right in your backyard. And then, you know, college is more than just sitting in a classroom. What are you gonna do for fun, right? And on a Wednesday night when you have some hours to kill or maybe a Saturday after the Gopher game? Well, maybe you're a sports fan like me. There are six professional sports teams literally right off this train. There, maybe you wanna see a show at the illustrious Guthrie Theater or the legendary Orpheum Theater. Maybe you wanna see a concert at First Ave or maybe a more intimate feel at the Armory. And then we have, we have over 70 different languages and dialects in the Twin Cities. We have our own restaurant scene. I mean, I've been living in the Twin Cities for years. I still find a new restaurant every weekend to explore. So just so much capacity to explore outside of your coursework. Now, the stats I wanna share with you is that for our university, we have a 93% retention rate over the first year. Of a school of our size, that is an incredible amount because um, that is 93% of freshman students coming back to continue their advanced studies, which I think is a big deal. And I think part of the reason why is hopefully some of the benefits that you've seen so far in this presentation, but also just that we have so in depth with our advising services and our career support services to support you for success that we actually have a 71% graduation rate in four years, which is the third highest in all Big Ten schools. And we're pretty proud of that. Now, this is my information. Um, as you can see here, this is my direct phone number. It leads to, right now I'm working remote, so that cell phone number leads straight to me, as well as my email, which I will put in the chat for everybody. But for the sake of time at every other school here, I'm gonna stop now. Thank you again for coming out tonight. I'm gonna pass it back to Jennifer. Thank you so much, Jacob, for sharing with us about the University of Minnesota Twin Cities. The next school that we'll be hearing from tonight is Saginaw Valley State University. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Michelle Stanley. I'm the Assistant Director of Regional Operations with Saginaw Valley. And um, I'm going to talk about our university a little bit. So uh, first off, I wanted to highlight the Great Lakes Bay region. For any of you who have had an opportunity to go up north in the summer for vacation and you decide to cross the borderline up to the state of Michigan, we're probably about two and a half hours north of the Toledo, uh, Michigan border. So um, these are a few different pictures of the Great Lakes Bay region. And um, we are smack dab in the middle of the Tri-City area of Bay City, Saginaw, and Midland. We are a little bit more remote, though. So when you look at um, where our campus is located, we're about 20 minutes from each city center. We are our own community, and we really appreciate that our students still have the luxuries of, you know, driving only four minutes to the local Target or the mall, the grocery stores and the restaurants, but you don't have quite as many distractions as what you would have from an urban environment. So we encourage you, if you are driving up Highway 75 to go up north to um, vacation in the summers, or go up north to go skiing in the winter, uh, stop by campus and check us out. So we have over 100 different undergraduate and graduate degree programs that fall under five different categories. We have our College of Arts and Behavioral Sciences, our College of Business and Management, our College of Education, College of Health and Human Services, and then also College of Science, Engineering, and Technology. We have one of the largest BSN programs and social work programs within the state of Michigan. And we have um, a 99% job placement for several different programs, including accounting, engineering, and education. We are in dire need of teachers right now, um, including nursing as well. So what's really cool is we have a lot of unique opportunities for you to explore within your program. Uh, many of us are probably going to talk about research and how important it is for you to build your resume um, as you are in your undergraduate studies because employers are looking for graduates who have that education and experience under their belt. 
Now we get a lot of athletes from out of state, especially from Ohio, Illinois, and Indiana. So I did want to talk about our athletics a little bit. And so we are a part of Division II GLIAC Conference with the NCAA. We have over 19 different athletic programs, and I am actually one of our athletic liaisons. My colleague, Melinda, who is also um, on this webinar with us, who is uh, typing up our links, she is an athletic liaison as well. So depending on what sport, if you are interested in being recruited, as soon as you are a junior, you are more than welcome to start reaching out to our coaches, maybe scheduling a campus visit, meeting with admissions and faculty from our different departments. So we are actually ranked number one in the nation amongst public universities for best on-campus housing and housing experience. This is really important because when you are a freshman in college, there's not very many times in your life where you get to live in a community where everyone's about that same age, going through that same life transition of moving away from home for the first time. And so beyond facilities of not having the traditional dorms with community bathrooms, there's this student life piece. And it's really important for you to get involved in student life, um, whether that is participating in intramural sports, club sports, or varsity sports, but getting engaged in um, different academic programs, or maybe you're interested in our zombie defense council or cake club, you name it, there are programs that you can participate in and, um, you know, fill that extra time that you're going to have on campus. So I really wanted to talk about cost because this is a really important factor for many of our students. It always has been and I think it always will be. So when you look at our out-of-state tuition and fees, you're looking at about $36,565. Now that's a big chunk of money, but what's really nice is all of our students, if they have a 2.5 cumulative GPA or higher, they qualify for our red and white award, which brings down your total tuition fees and housing down to about 23,000, which is just a smidgen over what our in-state students pay. And that's just one scholarship opportunity that you have for being an out-of-state student. Now, these are our guaranteed merit-based scholarships. They start at a 3.0 GPA. They go all the way up to a four point and everything in between. Uh, and these are automatically awarded to you when you apply for admission. We also have need-based scholarships and private scholarships that are available in addition to a presidential scholarship, which covers 100% of tuition. And we actually had an Ohio student who uh, qualified for one of our final 30 100% tuition scholarships. And I'm so proud of her. I've been working with her for a long time on that. So when it's all said and done, we're still accepting applications. It's not too late to apply. So for my seniors, if you are still undecided on what you wanna do, make sure you get out there and apply. Um, you, you don't have until May 1 to make that final decision, but if you are on the fence, explore your options. Think about what you wanna do when it comes to um, after graduation, where do you see yourself going to school? You can apply for free and um, visit different colleges as well. That's most important. So for the sake of time, I'm going to stop sharing my screen and uh, let the next university chat. Michelle, thank you so much for sharing more about Saginaw Valley State University. Our next presentation is going to be from Syracuse University. Good evening, everyone. And I'm so excited to be here tonight to introduce a little bit more about Syracuse University to you. My name is Jennifer Issa, and I'm also joined behind the scenes uh, by my colleague, Mike McGrath. I am the primary admissions representative for the greater Cleveland metro area in Northeast Ohio, and Mike covers the rest of the state. So we're happy to have you with us here tonight. I know Mike will be uh, answering some questions uh, behind the scenes. So feel free to chime in with any questions that you have. But I first just want to give you a glimpse of our beautiful campus in central New York and the picture that you are seeing here. Oops, let me see. Okay, sorry, just wanna make sure that was up. Uh, the picture that you're seeing here is uh, from this past fall and you can see some of the beautiful colors that we have across campus. And it's a very traditional college campus setting. We are in the city of Syracuse. Uh, it's a small city, but it does have many things that a major metropolitan area would have to offer. But the campus itself isn't right in the middle of downtown. So again, you have a lot of green space, a lot of 
a place to hang out in between classes. And we just celebrated our 150th year uh, last year. So you can see a lot of old architecture on campus and a lot of uh, really unique buildings that we have plus a lot of new uh, buildings and new structures. One of them you see in the picture here, the one that almost looks like it has a roller coaster on top, that's our dome stadium um, that, that we like to call the Loud House, uh, but that's where our football, basketball, and lacrosse team play. And also a lot of events happen in the dome uh, throughout the year, including commencement at the end of the year. But uh, we just had a new roof put on the dome uh, this past year. So again, that new architecture with the old. The other thing I just wanna point out in this picture, uh, so you can't see the downtown uh, area from this, I should say this angle, but I wanted to point out that once you get outside of the city, we are right on the edge of the Finger Lakes region. It's a beautiful area and so many things to do off campus that our students could take advantage of, uh, especially this time of year. You may have heard we do get a little bit of snow here in Syracuse, so students definitely like to take advantage of skiing, snowboarding. Uh, we have an outdoor ice rink in downtown, so definitely enjoying the winters here. And where exactly is Syracuse? So we are right in the heart of central New York State. So if you take a look at the map here, you can get an idea of where we are located um, in the state of New York. And I think one of the things that students often think is that most of our students do come from New York State, but actually majority of our students do come from outside of New York State. And countries all over the world. So we do have a wonderful diverse student population, about 15,000 undergraduate students on campus. So we like to consider ourselves a bit medium sized. So not too large, uh, but not small, but you'll have uh, that large school experience, but you also have a small more intimate experience as well. As far as academics, our institution is comprised of our 10 undergraduate schools and colleges, which you can see listed here on the slide. And as you'll see, it's a really great place if you have somewhat of an idea of what you want to study, as well as if you're still a little bit unsure and starting to explore. When you do apply to Syracuse, you do apply directly to one of the schools or colleges um, where possibly your interests lie, but many of them you can apply to as undecided. So I know many of you are juniors or younger and not quite at that stage yet, so you'll have time to figure that out. But just know that there's a lot of opportunity for exploration, ways to combine studies. Our students often have have combinations of two majors or majors and a minor. So you have uh, plenty of ways to really explore all of your academic areas of interest. And also several ways to really put what you've learned in the classroom into practice. And you can do that by testing the waters, testing what you've learned and really continue your learning outside the classroom as well. Uh, right from the beginning, we take an integrated approach between academic and career advisor and you'll career advising, I should say, and you'll have access to those resources right from day one when you set foot on campus. And uh, similar to uh, the University of Minnesota, we have that in each individual school and college. So you have access to the faculty and staff in those offices. We are a top tier research one university. And so Research happens across all of our colleges on campus and the source is one of the main hubs where you can uh, get access to um, apply for funding, guidance, assistance, applying for research grants and how to get that research project off the ground. Um, maybe you have a particular idea you want uh, to maybe put that into practice. Uh, set up a prototype of uh, things like our Blackstone Launchpad can help you do that. And also really taking opportunities to explore and learn off campus. Uh, we have one of the oldest international education programs around in the country through Syracuse abroad. We offer programs in over 60 different countries. And we have our discovery program, which is for first year students who are ready to get that first study abroad experience and can spend their first semester um, off campus.
We also have opportunities uh, in the U.S. So you have um, maybe in Washington, D.C., Los Angeles, or New York City. And what does it mean to be orange? We have a great diverse student population, so many things to get involved with on campus. Our new facility, the Barnes Center at the Arch uh, for fitness and recreation. And we also just opened our new, uh, say, newly renovated Shine Student Center. And just a couple things for applying. I'll just post those up there and then how you can contact us. So I apologize for running a little bit late, um, but just wanted to put our contact information up there. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jennifer, for sharing more about Syracuse with all of us. To all of our attendees, I just want to remind you, we've reached that halfway point. So we have heard from three great schools. We have three more to go. So this is definitely a great time to think about any questions for the Q&A. You can address the school that has already spoke, or you can uh, drop any question for the schools that are coming up. And next, we're going to be hearing from Bowling Green State University. There we can. All right. There you go. Perfect. We are going to dive right in. Good evening, everybody. My name is Sarah Zachrich. I serve as the Assistant Director of Admissions over here at BGSU. I'm excited to spend, of course, the next few minutes chatting with you all. Um, and like I said, it's a quick presentation, so let's go ahead and dig into it. For anybody who's not familiar, of course, Bowling Green is located up in Northwest Ohio. Bowling Green is very much so a college town. We're one of those places where, of course, you have everything you need in the city of Bowling Green. Um, but at the same time, you know, when you go to our downtown area, it's literally called Main Street. It has local shops and local restaurants and, you know, those places that are going to be a part of your college experience in their own unique way. But at the same time, we're certainly not far from anything. Two hours from Cleveland, two hours from Columbus, four hours from Pittsburgh, four hours from Chicago. Um, we're located in, in a great spot. Um, and of course, at the same time, you know, we are, we say 30 minutes to cities and, and shorelines. So we're just south of Toledo, um, of course, very close to Cedar Point, Lake Erie, things like that. Um, so it puts BGSU in a really, really good spot there. Now, to give you a quick snapshot, of course, BGSU is considered to be a mid-sized institution. We've got in total about 20,000 students that call BGSU home. That includes, of course, our freshman population, our graduate students, students that attend our branch campus. They are all a part of that total. We have students that come from about 70 different countries to attend BGSU, and about 20% of our incoming class is of a different diverse background, and about 15% of the incoming class is from out of state. So it's definitely a very diverse population, a welcoming population. That's something that you'll feel instantly when you come on campus to Bowling Green. Now, a couple things that are unique to BGSU. These are some of our programs that definitely draw some attention. Um, we, of course, have a full flight program, a full aviation program at BGSU. Our airport and flight center is located right on main campus. So folks pursuing that degree can walk to where their classes are, walk to the planes to log their flight hours, which makes it, of course, extremely convenient. We also have full bachelor of science and forensic science uh, programs on campus. The Ohio Attorney General put a BCI crime lab right on our campus, which catapulted the work we do there. And we also have a unique program called our FLY program for students with learning differences that would like additional accommodations and to work one-on-one -on -one with a learning specialist on campus. We have even unique opportunities for students like that to ensure they get the service that they need while they're with us. A couple new things to BG. We now have our Cedar Fair Resort and Attraction Management Program. It's in partnership, of course, with Cedar Fair and Cedar Point, located near BGSU. And so it gives students who are looking to learn how to run and manage amusement parks and resorts that unique opportunity. So it is a one-of-a-kind program. Uh, we also have added software engineering and digital forensics to our lineup. And then we also have uh, opened our brand new Mauer Center that just opened this past fall, home to our Schmidt Horse College of Business. And of course, that's just a quick snapshot of our programs. At the end of the day, we have about 200 different majors and programs at BGSU that run across six different academic colleges. We also, of course, have an honors college at BGSU as well. So for those who are looking to challenge themselves further academically, you also have an opportunity to apply to be a part of our honors college experience. 
And of course, we have a program to serve undecided students as well. Joining our Deciding Student Program is a choice. It's the biggest major. It's the way for you to get the help you need up front um, to get that support with your academics uh, to ensure you can then declare that major without changing it three or four times along the way as you try to navigate that process. You'll receive great academic support both inside and outside of the classroom, as you can see. You can tell you're going to get to know your teachers. They're going to get to know you. You, we also have our Learning Commons, which is our free tutoring center on campus that all students can take advantage of. We also have a brand new initiative at BGSU called Life Design. We believe that your college experience is more than just getting a degree and it's more than just getting a job. Those are two really important things and those are two things that we are, of course, going to help you achieve, but you're going to do a lot of learning and growing over the four years with us. And so you're going to work with a life design coach who helps you define your success, define what you want to get out of your four years, and to help you navigate that process every step of the way. This is somebody you'll be paired up with all four years that you're with us at BGSU. It goes beyond just academic advising. This person is your new coach, your counselor, your go-to, and somebody that will work with you all throughout your time. Of course, campus life, you know, we have students living on campus with us, as you can expect. Um, we have 10 different residence halls to pick from, as well as learning community opportunities if you want to live with students you have something in common with. Um, students live with us for their first two years on campus. Unless you happen to live within a 50-mile radius, then you do, of course, have the option to commute. And for those on campus, of course, or for those commuting, we, of course, make sure you make your health and wellness a priority. We have a counseling center on campus that students can utilize at no additional cost. Uh, which is super important to take advantage of. I think this year has definitely taught us that. And so we make sure students know that's an opportunity. And of course, with a school of our size, there's gonna be hundreds of ways to get involved that we want you to take advantage of, whether it's student organizations, athletics, being a part of service learning opportunities, you will find where you belong. You will find where that group uh, that you fit in. Uh, and along the way, you will 100% stand out and make a difference in the things that matter to you. Uh, in terms of how to apply, we of course are taking applications for fall 2021 for those that are looking at us for fall 2022 and beyond. Uh, we are a part of the common application. We always have our application through our website as well. Once you do that, we will then need credentials, at least your official high school transcript. If you're able to test, you can send an ACT or SAT score our way. However, if you were unable to test as a result of COVID, you can notify us on your application uh, and be able to uh, apply through the test waiver. From there, you'll work through next steps, which will work with you on every step of the way, of course. This will give you a super quick snapshot on cost. Um, and of course, I can provide a link so you can look at that further. We have scholarship opportunities that are merit-based, need-based, volunteer-based, you name it, you've got it. And of course, if you wanna see us up close in person, don't hesitate to contact us. I'll put my contact information in the chat. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, Sarah, for presenting about the Lingering State. Our next presentation is gonna be from Ohio University. All right, well, good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us this evening to learn about a lot of your, your fantastic options. Um, maybe this year, if you're a senior or in the future, if you are a junior or below. Um, my name is Dan Yates and I happily serve as the Associate Director for Outreach and Recruitment here in undergraduate admissions at Ohio University. Um, I'm also a very proud two-time graduate of Ohio. So there's something special about Ohio University that hopefully as we talk a little bit over the next couple minutes um, that you'll start to realize um, that is definitely unique and definitely special um, about the university. So just a, a couple really quick things so you're able to, to get an idea of uh, what Ohio University is all about. We are, um, we just celebrated our 218th birthday on February 18th of just last week. So uh, we have a really rich history of education here at Ohio. Um, so we've been around for quite some time. We have over 17,000 undergraduate students. And if you combine that with our, our doctoral students, our master's students, our PhD students, our medical students, we have about 23,000 or so total students that call Athens, Ohio and Ohio University home. Um, we also have 250 different academic majors that does not include all of the minors and certificates, which can be a lot and can be overwhelming. I myself came in to Ohio University as an undecided student. What I found to be true is that Ohio is a very safe place to be undecided. If you're not quite sure what you want to do, we have some fantastic colleagues in our university college that will make sure you are taking the coursework that will set you for set you up for success 
and set you on the right path to what you actually want to complete. On the flip side of that, if you do know what you want to do, the chances that Ohio University has that program is gonna be fairly high. We have majors ranging from nursing to education to engineering. We have an aviation flight program and aviation technology and management. We have uh, marine biology and uh, business majors. I was a, a communication major. We have journalism. There's so many different options at the university. So the chances of, again, you finding your right fit when it comes to your academic major is gonna be fairly high. Our students also get involved in a number of, of student activities and clubs while they're on campus. And I'm sure as you listen to all of the other fantastic reps that are here this evening, you've come to realize that being involved is a very, very important piece of your academic career. And Ohio University is no different in that, that regard. We have a lot of different opportunities for you to get involved. Our students um, do have a two-year residential requirement. So we, we do have students that are living on campus for the first and the second year, which makes getting involved really part of our students' DNA. It's very easy to get involved on campus, whether that is through the organizations or really just cheering on your fellow Bobcats while they're on the football fields or basketball courts um, or even on stages. We have two different really great things that I like to point out, one of which our students get into all of our Division I sports at no additional cost. So you show up at game day with your Ohio ID, you'll swipe in and you'll just go ahead and grab a seat and cheer on the Bobcats. If you would rather cheer on your fellow Bobcats that are on the stage for a concert or a theater production or a music venue or some sort or are showcasing their artwork in a new art gallery opening, you're also able to support them at no additional cost as well. Ohio University is also home to uh, the state of Ohio's first and really truly transparent and predictable cost model uh, called the Ohio Guarantee Plus. So back in 2015, this is when this, this program started. It has three different pillars. First and foremost is a fixed rate tuition and fee table. So as you get started at the university, that same tuition and fee rate will go with you for four years or 12 consecutive semesters, making the cost of attending Ohio as predictable and as transparent as possible. I think one of the, the other, I mean, you could say just as important pieces is the shared commitment to an on-time, on-plan graduation. A lot of us have set aside maybe four years to, to attend an institution to ultimately graduate with a degree. That is what we will try to commit to with, with our students. We wanna make sure that on day one, you know what that pathway looks like from the, the first day you step on campus to the day you're gonna walk across that stage at graduation. And then as you finish, and as you do get that, that degree from Ohio University, the third pillar to the program is you will have lifelong benefits. So whether that's using our Career and Leadership Development Center, whether that's getting some additional scholarship funds to come back and complete a second degree, there's a lot of benefits that'll continue with you forever because you are definitely forever a Bobcat and forever uh, an alum of this institution. If you're looking to apply, if you're a senior, it's still not too late. You're still welcome to do so through the common application or through our own application. If you are a junior, um, our application typically opens up in August and we are a member of the Common App. We are also permanently test optional. So if you choose to apply without a test score, you will still be considered for merit-based scholarships, for direct admission to any program at the university, as well as any honors experiences that come with the institution or your specific program. If you choose to include your test score, you're welcome to do that. Um, but it's not something that we would require for admission. So that's a permanent change. We are having some in-person visits and some virtual options. So we would encourage you if you have the opportunity and want to come check us out to visit us on our website and get those scheduled. My contact information is at the bottom of the screen, but I'll also include that in the chat. Thank you so much for listening. Awesome. Thank you, Dan, so much for sharing more about Ohio University. We're now heading to our sixth school to hear from tonight. So as you can see on the screen, we're gonna be hearing from Loyola University, Chicago.
there we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> Still muted. Uh, thank you. Sorry, I jumped the gun there, but um, appreciate it. So okay. I'm going to scoot through some info real quick about Loyola University Chicago. Um, I am a counselor there and I love working with the students of Ohio, so I'm happy to be here. Uh, so Loyola, as you could probably guess, is located in the city of Chicago. Um, but if you look at this picture, it doesn't quite look like the city. And I think that's one of the real benefits of it. Um, we are located on the north side of the city, tucked up in the neighborhood of Rogers Park, right up against the shores of Lake Michigan. Um, so we're kind of out of the hustle and bustle of the city. And that's something that I think really makes the transition for students very easy. Um, we are a Jesuit institution, a Catholic Jesuit institution. So that's something that is very much instilled in our values, but we really, really pride ourselves on being a home to all faiths. Um, about 40% of our population is not Catholic. We have a really wide faith diversity on campus, um, as well as wide variety of diversity in general. We have students coming from about 100, or all 50 states, about 120 different countries. Um, so we've got a lot of students coming from a lot of different backgrounds. And I think that's something that really makes Loyalists so wonderful. Our total enrollment here is about 17,000, but just over 12,000 of that is undergraduate. So that's really the population that you all will be spending your time with. Um, and I think we really are really truly a mid-sized school. We fit really nicely right into that category of having a lot of the big social and academic resources that larger state institutions would have. Um, but we've got smaller class sizes on average about 26 and really tight knit communities that you tend to see um, at those smaller institutions. We've got about 80 different undergraduate majors and 80 different minors to choose from. And we'll take a look at the colleges that we have on our next slide here. Um, and something that is really important to Loyola and something that we try to make very easy for our students is to get involved outside of the classroom. Every student that comes through Loyola will do some type of engaged learning course. Um, for a nursing student, that could be a clinical. Um, for an environmental science student, that could be a research uh, position under one of our professors or out within the city. Um, for other students, like a communication or business major, that could be an internship. And particularly for those two student or types of students, um, we try to make that as easy as possible. And we have a, town, a campus in downtown Chicago that really makes it convenient and easy to have internships. Um, we have our large main campus right up that you see this picture here. It's very traditional and quiet. Um, but then the downtown campus is located right in the heart of downtown Chicago, and it's right in the neighborhood of all of these interesting opportunities for research, internships, and service. And that really enables students to um, get out there and get their hands dirty because we really believe at Loyola that you learn so much more by doing than by sitting in a classroom. Um, a big part of that is going to come from our career development center and from our experiential learning centers. Those are two excellent resource centers that students will use all through their high school or their college career with us. Um, one thing that uh, they really specialize in is focusing on getting students internship opportunities. So that's a great place to go. And like you'll find at many universities, your career development center is going to be yours all throughout your life. That doesn't stop. Um, when you graduate, you will have those services at your fingertips at any time. And we have alumni connections all over the country and all over the world um, so that you can be sure that whatever you're interested in after Loyola, you will get there. 98% of our graduates are either enrolled in graduate school or, or employed within three months. And a big part of that is because of those two resource centers. Um, we also have great study abroad programs. About one in three of our students will study abroad. It's again, within our values of engaged learning, something we really encourage in students. Um, we have two international campuses, one in Rome and one in Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. So those are, those are very popular spots to go, but we've got locations in about 70 different countries. So re you really have quite a lot of options. The world is truly your oyster. Now on the left side here, you'll see um, all eight of our colleges. We are direct admit here at Loyola. So that means that you'll be admitted right into one of our eight colleges based on the major that you put on your application. But you will have the opportunity to switch between the majors and even move between the colleges here. It's really quite easy to do that. And we understand that students don't always know what they want to do when they're 18 years old. And we're not gonna hold that against you know that you can switch around between majors, between schools as you figure that out. The one exception there is our direct entry nursing program. You do have to apply for that as an incoming freshman only, and that is a four-year program, um, a very, very well-known program that is highly rated. Um, I'll also mention that our School of Business is the number one undergraduate business program in the city of Chicago. And then our School of Environmental Sustainability just earned their accreditation, so we're very excited about that. Um, 
As hard as we work, we also play. Um, we have about 250 different student organizations on campus, um, including 19 fraternities and sororities. There's lots of different ways that you can get involved in those. We also have our club and intramural sports, which is a great way to meet other students and stay active in a much more casual setting. Um, and then of course, we've got our division one sports teams. Um, I, we have our, um, our, uh, our uh, I'm forgetting our arena right on campus. Um, uh, and so those games are free to students. There's a lot of school spirit, especially with our men's basketball team being very good in the last couple of years. They're ranked in the top 25 right now. We are thrilled about that. March Madness is going to be a great season for us. We're very excited about it. Um, but uh, those are a great way to get out, support the Ramblers. It's all free to you as a student and very accessible. And then lastly, very quickly, I'll just mention that uh, our application is free and it's online. You are welcome to apply right now if you're a senior. I know most of you are, you are juniors, so just know that you can apply through our website on the Coalition app or the Common app. And then here's a bit of information for, um, for you to look at and I will also post that in the chat. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, Sarah, for sharing more with us about Loyola University Chicago. Um, I'd love to invite, we have a few minutes before we end, so I'd love to invite all of our panelists to come back on camera, and we are going to answer a Q&A question um, that I'm going to have popping up for you all. So I would, we're going to go in the same order, just as a reminder of the order that you presented. So when the first person ahead of you finishes, just feel free to jump right in. So could you share more about a favorite event or tradition on campus that shares a little bit more about that student experience and what any of these students could look forward to if they came to your school? And we'll start with University of Minnesota Twin Cities. Jacob? Absolutely. Thank you, Jennifer. Um, I'll keep it short because I don't want to hear everybody else's too. Um, so I think for our campus, so we have what's called Spring Jam, which is a student-led concert series that's, um, they bring in like national artists and also some kind of more indie ones that are on the rise every single spring. It's usually like that first week of April. And I, the couple of reasons I love it, A, it's that first sign that spring's really here. I will confess it gets cold in Minnesota in the winter. And uh, once it starts warming up, is this is like that first kickoff. And then also we have a ton of carnival rides and other things that make it really, really a big deal. So that would be my take on this question. For Saginaw Valley State University, we have a Battle of the Valleys. So it's a week long fundraising competition that we compete against our uh, another public university in Michigan called Grand Valley State University. And then it wraps up with a football game. And for the past decade, we have beat Grand Valley in fundraising and we are less than half the size in campus population. So it's crazy. Now, don't ask about the football score because it's a really tough one, but um, we almost beat them in triple overtime last year. So uh, it's, it's a really fun week. Hey, I would say at Syracuse, uh, one of my favorite things is right before our home football games out in the quad, it's always, there's, very, it's very festive and our marching band comes and plays on the steps of Hendricks Chapel. So the fight song, the alma mater, trying to get us riled up to go into the dome and then they uh, run off the steps and head into the dome and we follow shortly afterwards to go in and cheer on our team. And we have the largest indoor uh, dome stadium on a college campus. So again, the Loud House. So I'm gonna do a bit of a unique spin. At BGSU at the start of the spring semester, we hosted a new event for us called Winter Wonderland. And it was basically um, a little event that we posted again, start of the spring semester, we had an ice skating rink and fire pits for students and a Build-A-Bear and hot cocoa. And I bring it up because I think it's important for you to know that and in a year, unlike any other, we have found ways to continue to allow our students to interact, to be together safely, um, to be able to have an incredible college experience, even if it looks really different. And so that was an event that we did for the first time ever this year. And I definitely think it's going to continue. At Ohio University, I don't know if you remember the, the gateway that was on my slide. I think one of the, the coolest traditions um, during freshman convocation, which is the day before classes begin, first year students follow the marching band, the marching 110, and they dance. They're, that's a whole tradition all in itself. Uh, but they follow the 110 up to our college green and enter that gate. And the, the sign reads on the front, um, thou enter, and it goes on. And then um, a tradition when you graduate is to exit the other way 
and it's thou do depart and it goes on. So it's just kind of a fun, um, fun way to enter campus for the first time and then leave campus for, for your last time as a student. And then you'll continue your, your involvement as an alum. Dan, you took my tradition. That's exactly what we do at Loyola too. We also have students, but it's actually instead of a gateway, it's the great green doors of our historic Cudahy Library. And our entire freshman class walks through those doors on their first day during convocation um, to the cheers of all Loyola students, faculty and staff along the way. And then again, when you graduate, you walk through them one more time as the book ends your Loyola experience. Awesome. I love this question. I hope that everyone who's attending or watching this later maybe feels inspired to um, go check out, you know, Google and learn more about each of these traditions and, you know, just alongside as you figure out and learn more about each of the academic opportunities and all of the other um, awesome things about each school. Well, we have reached the end of our time together tonight. Um, thank you so much, first of all, to all of our panelists for presenting about your schools, not just the facts and figures, but the passion you have for the unique and amazing student experiences that you offer. And to all of our attendees and those watching later on, um, thank you so much for taking the time to learn about each of these schools. We hope it makes a big impact in your college search process. As you depart tonight, when you close the window, there's going to be a link to a very quick four question survey. We'd appreciate any feedback that you can provide. Also, again, this is just one of many sessions that are being hosted. So please be sure to sign up for additional sessions, both the co virtual college fair as it continues on tonight too, and also for the college decision and search process panels happening in about two weeks time. You can find this recording, all session recordings, as well as the signups for the additional sessions, all at strivescan.com slash Ohio. Thank you again, everyone for joining us. Best wishes in your college decision process. Thanks and good night.